Good evening, everybody. It's uh, good to have each one of you tuned in tonight to uh, Springfield First Baptist Church uh, live stream here on uh, Mother's Day. I want to again wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. My name is Marty Mosley. I'm the pastor there at Springfield First Baptist Church. We're located at 141 Springfield Church Road, Rogersville, Alabama. Just uh, off of Highway 101, halfway between uh, Elgin and Lexington. And again, it's good to have each one of you out this evening. We're going to sing a couple songs tonight, and uh, then we'll get started. Uh, look at some prayer requests, some announcements. And uh, we also uh, promised you tonight that, uh, or promised you this morning that tonight we would be looking at uh, what we our plans were for Wednesday evening and uh, Sunday, next Sunday, as we uh strive to get back into our uh sanctuary and uh, we'll be doing that toward the toward the end of the tonight's service first song we're going to do uh this evening is uh called uh, sweet by and by There's a land that is fairer than day And by faith we can see it afar For the Father waits over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there the sweet I am bright. we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore to our bountiful we will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessings that hallow our days in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. Next song we're going to do is called uh, Joy Unspeakable. Let me uh, get the song book turned over there to it. I've always, uh, whenever I used to lead this years ago, I'd always run out of breath. So uh, we've got three verses on there. Well, the uh, first, second, and last verse, and we'll try our best. I have found His grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free, yes, free indeed. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oreo the half has never yet been told. I have found the pleasure I once craved. It is joy and peace within. What a one wondrous blessing I am saved from the awful gulf of sin. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. 
Poham, glory, poham, glory, in joy unspeakable, and poham, glory, all the high plants never yet been told. Right on the last, I have found the joy no tongue can tell how its ways of glory roll. It is like a great or flowing well singing up within my soul. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, oh, the hat has never yet been told. Well, thank y'all again for being tuned in tonight i hope you uh had the opportunity today to uh if your mother is still living to get up with her we enjoyed our uh day being able to uh, visit with my mother and amy's mother of course uh amy was there and she's the mother to, to our daughters and amy's sister uh, Melissa was there, and so we we had a, a good afternoon. Uh, Anna is cleaning off, has cleaned off one of her, or in the process, I think it's still working, of getting some old pictures and videos. Uh, uh, most of them, I think, was from 2012 that she made on her cell phone back then. And so we spent part of the afternoon uh i was laughing along with them crying along with them as we were uh listening they was watching i was listening to those old videos that they made when they were uh, much younger and i got to hear uh my father-in-law's uh, voice on some of those videos and that uh, that brought back precious memories and uh, it's just been a been a good day, and I hope hope you've enjoyed the day as well. I uh, want to remind you that uh, there's a few other ways that uh, you can get a hold of our videos, and I'm going to tell you. I think it was last Sunday evening's uh, service. Uh, you're going to be listening to that uh, in the days ahead. If you go back and listen to that on youtube and you're gonna think well something's missing and uh you you are indeed right they uh flag me on uh using uh when we all get to heaven and we had to cut that one out so uh, it was on my list of being uh, public domain but uh they said somebody somewhere in some areas are still uh looking for that and uh so uh we uh do put them on youtube you can search for me marty mosley and uh find a, a folder called springfield first baptist church and uh we we are there and uh also tweet that link out to springfield fbc1 and it's at springfield fbc1 also retweet that to my personal page marty mosley and uh hope uh uh this may be the last one from Studio A in Grassy, Alabama on a, on a Sunday evening, uh, at least for a while. But uh, we uh, thank God for him allowing us to have this technology that we can uh, do this. Uh, prayer list hasn't changed since this morning, except for I've got Samantha's father's name spelled correctly. Uh they go to UAB tomorrow, and let's pray for traveling mercy down there and back, as well as for the doctor's visit that they have. Uh, but uh, they, they go tomorrow for that. Remember, Samantha, as uh, she gets results from that x-ray she had, uh, they think she may have a stress fracture in one of her feet. And also, continue, remember, Troy Lash, uh, as he goes for surgery on tuesday uh i've noticed uh, several loved ones uh that have uh several folks that i know have lost uh loved ones over the past few days and uh, one of them being uh 
Roger Houston, I believe is uh, Brother Houston's name. He's the pastor at Central Heights Baptist Church out in the Central Heights community. Their son uh, died over the last uh, uh, part of the this last week and uh, 40, 40 something year old young man. And I know he and his family are, are hurting today and as well as in the days to come. So let's let's remember his family. Let's uh, let's have a word of prayer right now. Uh, remember these that we've mentioned today. Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank you, Lord, uh, for your many blessings. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity again to approach your throne of grace. Uh, Lord, we ask you to be with Samantha and her dad, uh, Winston Dyson, to Mars. They go to Birmingham. And Lord, uh, give them a safe journey there and back. Uh, Lord, as Samantha, she waits word on these uh, x-rays lord we ask you to mend her foot and lord uh troy lashes he has surgery tuesday lord we ask you to be uh with him uh as always be with our leaders uh workers lord there, there's some going back to work tomorrow some that's went back to work this past week and some it's uh, been at work the, the entire time but lord uh we ask you to be with each one and uh be with our church that we'd always be the shining community shining light in the community that we need to be and uh lord uh, we just thank you for all these things in jesus name amen well it's uh as i said it's been a been a great day for the mosleys of uh north grassy and uh we want to thank uh james and jackie for tuning in tonight uh, miss judy mason for tuning in uh, jimmy and glendora ellis uh, Melanie Baker tuning in. Uh, Campbells of Mitchelltown are watching. Miss Bonnie is is watching. Uh, Justin's got uh, the Campbells and uh, Deb Hovatter are broadcasting Mitchelltown from the swing under the shade tree. Well, amen. And uh, Glendora goes and sees the surgeon on Tuesday, and. Uh, Let's, let's remember her in prayer, and we'll pause right now and uh, remember her. Let's uh, bow our heads again. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, uh, again, for your many blessings. Thank you for Glendora and Jimmy, Lord, and uh, the work you've done in her uh, life and uh, working on that leg. And, Lord, we ask you to be with them as they go to this doctor's appointment on Tuesday. And, Lord, uh, that, you, that, that healing of that leg uh, will just continue. And Lord, uh, the time's approaching. Lord, as a further in her recovery, and uh, Lord, with the uh, with her leg, and Lord, we just ask you to continue to be with, with her and Jimmy and all the doctors that tend to her. And we thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, uh, thankful for everybody to tune in tonight. I want to remind you that Wednesday night. Uh, we're going to be live streaming again, but we'll be in our sanctuary. Those of you that can join us uh, on Facebook, and and if you can make it to the sanctuary that evening, uh, we'll be glad to have you. We'll start at seven o'clock, and we'll we'll discuss more about that during at the end of the uh, tonight's live stream. Uh, right now, we want to look at a at a few scripture we're going to be looking tonight at first peter chapter one verses six through nine that's uh great uh don't know if there don't know of any passages scripture that is not great but this is a great passage dealing with the trials and temptations of believers uh, and that song that we sang, Joy Unspeakable, comes from uh, one of the verses we're going to look at tonight. First uh, Peter 1 and verse 8, the hymnal I'm looking at says, Top, you rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. So let's look tonight to First uh, Peter chapter 1. We'll read verse 6 through 9. First Peter chapter 1. Verse six through nine. Verse six says, Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptation. So wherein we we looking back up to, to verse 
five that we uh, preached on last week who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein we greatly rejoice. We're going to come back to that word here in a while that in, even in those temptations, even in those trials, we can still rejoice knowing that God is doing a work in us, even through those trials and, tempta and temptations that each of us uh, have to go through. So wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaven is through manifold temptations. Verse seven, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Verses eight and nine, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now you see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Let's bow our heads for another word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be uh, have the technology that we have to be able to uh, communicate to our church. Lord, uh, we uh, are, are grateful for it, Lord, and uh, Lord, we're grateful for your word tonight, Lord, that we can uh, look to it and find comfort, Lord, that uh, uh, some things that we go through in life, they, they're not, don't, don't bring about necessarily at the first bring about joy, but we can joy in those things because you are working in and through us to make us who you would have us to be. And uh, Lord, we uh, again, uh, we thank you for your many blessings. Lord, if there's one in the night that's listening to us that don't know your son, Jesus, his personal Lord and Savior, we pray, Lord, that you, they'll be saved before it's everlasting too late. And Lord, again, this blessings upon your word tonight as we look to it. Give us listening ears. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm looking there on the, the screen and uh, appreciate Melanie for helping me out there. Uh, Mr. Shane Albright, it's good to, good to have you join us tonight. Uh, Working with his wife, Angie. Went to school with Angie. Worked with Angie there at Lexington for 12 years. And uh, it's good to, good to have Shane uh tuning in tonight. Verse number six, if you'll look back to verse number six with me. We greatly rejoice, greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. There are a lot of of trials that you and I uh, go through, and uh, we're going to be talking about that. We're going to also talk, be talking about some temptations this evening, but I want to read to you just a minute from uh, the English Standard Version. It says this, in this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. Now, we uh, God allows temptation to come. Christ was tempted, if you remember. Uh, Christ was, uh, uh, sometimes we overlook the fact that the book of Luke, um, I know in particular says this. I don't know if the other gospels do or I can't remember if the other gospels do or not. But when Jesus was tempted of the devil 40 days and 40 nights, uh, the Bible says in the book of Luke that he was led by the spirit out to the wilderness to be tempted. So a lot, a lot of times we overlook that. We, we think that temptation is not common, but temptation is common. But God provides a way of escape. Uh, and there's not nothing going, he's not going to allow the temptation to overcome us, but he's going to provide a way of escape. Many kinds of trials that we go through that he puts us through. Why, why is he putting us through trials? Make sure our faith is where it needs to be. Uh, sometimes sickness that comes about. Sometimes there's suffering and sorrows that come about. Criticism 
comes about. Sometimes trials deal with that. Loneliness, ridicule. Sometimes abuse, loss, disappointment, a time of emptiness in our life comes about. And we're just going through trials in our life. Now, many, many temptations that we could list, uh, many trials that we could list that uh, we don't have the time this evening. Uh, we would probably spill more than likely over into next week, next month, if we was to do that. But uh, one writer puts it this way, the trials and temptations in the world, the trials and temptations in the world are as unlimited as acts of behavior. Let me, let me say that again. The trials and temptations in the world are as unlimited as acts of behavior for every act that can be a sin of too much or there can be a sin of too little. And those of us in the church probably heard it put this way, the sins of commission and the sins of omission. Well, that falls in line with the sins of too much, the sins of too little. It's especially true in the life of believers. For believers must stand in oppositions to selfishness, to immorality, to greed, to the unjust ways of the world. We have to make a stand against that. We cannot say, stand back and say those things are are okay. This was the case to the group of believers that Peter's writing to. If you remember back to when we first started in our study of first Peter, these are folks that had to flee because of persecution. They had to flee their homes, their businesses, their church had to maybe pack. Uh, if you remember, uh, uh, maybe pack whatever they could tote and hit the road. And uh, these are the people that he's writing to. And we, we think today, as we pointed out, kind of in contrast a few weeks ago, that uh, what we've been going through here, uh, we hadn't been caused to leave our home, but we've been caused to, uh, suggested to stay in our home. So uh, these folks that Peter is writing to had to flee their home. Uh, But remember this, that the trials and temptations are only for a season. If you remember, I've shared with you before that uh, the, the, uh, the older gentleman, the deacon, stood up one night and told his uh, favorite verse. And his favorite verse was part of the verse, and it came to pass. He had to explain why and it came to pass was his favorite verse. He was glad that the troubles, the trials, the temptations did not come to stay. They came to pass. If you look back to, to verse six there, uh, that ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. I want to talk to you just a minute about heaviness. It means to be grieving, to suffer sorrow, stress, pressure, mental anguish. You say, well, uh, ain't been tempted in a while. Well, bless your heart. Bless your heart. Hadn't been through trials in a while. Well, bless your heart. Don't look behind you. Say, you know, Satchel Page, uh, one picture guy used to pitch in the major leagues, used to pitch in the Negro leagues. Don't look behind you. Something may be gaining on you. Uh, don't look behind, behind you. Those trials and temptations may be coming up uh, behind you. Verse six paints a dark, dark picture. Starts out good. We're going to rejoice because of what we've talked about last week. We're going to rejoice because of the uh, power that comes through faith and to salvation. We're going to rejoice about that. But here we come into, we may be heaviness, in heaviness through 
manifold temptations. Let's look to verse number seven. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, tried fire, that perishes, though, though it be tried in fire, might be found in the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Uh, what are the purpose of trials and temptations? To make us more like him. To improve upon our faith. When trials and temptations come, who, who are we going to lean on? Well, if we're a child of God, we, we're going to be leaning upon him. Our trials and temptations going to come. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. Who are we going to lean on? Who are we going to turn to? What are we going to turn to? Some folks turn this, that, and the other and end up worse shape than what they started out with. But a child of God is going to lean on upon him. I want to tell you, a uh, story I've, I've told many, many times over the years is about this, the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold. I, now, I've uh, the gold that I have in my house, I, I'm looking at the spine of a book looking in front of me. I'm looking at the spine of my Bible here that I hold in my hand. And uh, th this Bible, you know, the, the pages have got a little gold looking stuff here on the edge. Uh, as far as in this house that I'm sitting in, the amount of gold that we have would be mm, not much. But here's what I read, and I, I've had people that worked at Reynolds or whatever it's called today, Wise, uh, whatever it's called this week. I've heard them, had them tell me that the same thing is true about aluminum. But the Bible there in verse seven talks about gold. So let's talk about gold. They tell me that you can put gold as maybe as we know it in into a crucible and heat it. And as it is heated, the impurities in that gold that we thought, man, man we got some good looking stuff here. But that fire is going to heat it up and cause the impurities to come to the top and the goldsmith can take a, a piece of metal and, and rake those impurities out. And what he now has is a crucible of pure gold. Now, uh, that verse in verse seven says that, uh, that your faith be that the trial of your faith. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the word tried just a minute. It means to prove, to test, to strengthen, to show that your faith is genuine. Gold, we can rake off those impurities. We can take the dross out and we can have that crucible of pure gold. That's what God wants to do in my life, in your life. He wants the things removed that don't need to be there. What what one thing that is there that don't need to be there necessarily is the things that causes us to fall into temptation. Is temptation common in this life? Yes. In the life to come, in heaven, I don't think so. No. But in this life, temptation trials are gonna come. God uses them. God uses the trials that we go through to strengthen us. Now, something I left off of my story, those that have been hearing me tell that story for years about the crucible of gold. Uh, one thing that, I'm uh, that I've left out of it so far is, is that goldsmith, after he's raked out all the impurities out of that gold, can look down into that crucible and he sees something. He sees his reflection in that pot, that crucible of pure gold. And let me tell you what, what? Us as a child of God, 
when God gets a hold of us and gets all of those impurities out of our life, then he can look down in my life. He can look down in your life. He can see his reflection coming back to him as he looks in our life. As he talked about Jesus after the uh, his baptism. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. May he also be able to look down on my life, your life, and see that his reflection is evidenced in our life. God uses the fire of trials and temptations for a good purpose. He uses them to make us clean, to make us pure, to make us trust him more and more and more. And as that happens, we're going to be more and more and more like him. More and more and more like him. Now let's look at verse number eight. Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. How are we going to get through these trials and temptations? Well, as we said in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, there's no temptation taken us but that which is common, but God's going to provide a way of escape. How are we going to find that way of escape? Through the love that we have for Jesus Christ. Through the love that we have for Jesus Christ. When we are filled up with the Holy Spirit of God, we're going to be following his leadership. That temptation may still be around, but it's not going to affect us as much when we're filled up with the Holy Spirit of God because of our love for Jesus Christ. Not only because of our love for Jesus Christ, but because of our belief in him. Now, if you look there, uh, though we now, though now you see him not yet, Believe it. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about belief for just a minute. That is a continuous action, a continuous belief, a belief that continues on and on in believing and trusting in Jesus Christ. Belief. Turning away from those temptations, standing firm and relying upon his presence. What about the joy that comes on being the day, the times that we're filled up with the spirit of God? It is joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Matthew Henry puts it this way. This joy is inexpressible. You might go up to somebody and say, well, describe that joy. Well, until you experience it. I don't think it'd be put into words, but when you experience it, you're going to know. So as you listen to this, as you do you know Jesus? Because the only way you're going to experience that joy is by knowing him. If you don't know Jesus, your joy is not going to be unspeakable and full of glory. Matthew Henry continues, it, it says, it cannot be described in words. The best discovery is by experimental taste of it. It is full of glory, full of heaven. He says there is much of heaven and the future glory in the present joys 
of Christians. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Again, if you don't if you don't know him, I invite you to come to know him. Keeping our eyes focused upon him. If you remember uh, what Hebrews chapter 12 says, it tells us where to fasten in our eyes on. And, uh, if you'll look over there with me, I, I have not, don't have that on uh, the slide tonight or on the, those little, those things are called banners that we uh, have. I'm flashing, putting those scripture up there with. But Hebrews 12 and, and verse Number two, it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And look at what verse nine says, receiving the end of your faith. You say, well, I don't want faith in. No, you, don't, you don't understand. You've probably heard it put this way. Most of your Christian life, most of your Christian walk, that one day our faith is going to become real when we see Jesus face to face. And that's what that's talking about right there. That's what that's talking about. We've spent a life loving Christ and rejoicing in our spirit, but receiving the end of your faith when we see him face to face and ultimately the salvation of our souls. We've been saved. If you know Christ, you've been saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We're being saved. He's still sanctifying us, still working on us. But one day, finally, we will be saved. That's when our receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Friend, if you don't know Christ, you're missing it all. You're missing it all. You're missing it all. I ask you to reach out. Uh, if you know a believer that lives next door to you, if you can send me a message, reach out to somebody that will aid you, help you in making Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. We go through many things in this life. And I want to remind some of you listening, I've already called your name tonight. We all agree on and who I'm talking about. We've, we've all agreed on this. How do folks go through stuff? How do they go through life without the Lord? I don't know. It's got to be a miserable existence. There's been some times in my life when I've experienced some miserable times. And one of them was when I realized I was lost. Another one was when I got out of the will of God. I was a Christian, but I was most, most miserable. So receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Let's, let's have a word of prayer. And thank you again for tuning in tonight. We thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for your many, many blessings. Thank you for your word, Lord, that your that salvation is something that's real. Salvation is real. We can know right now today if we're saved. As verse 9 says that there's going to come a day after a while that we receive the end of our faith, even the salvation of our souls. But we can know right now if we've received that. And I pray that each one that is listening to this tonight and those that listen to it in the days to come will know you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, uh, just be with us. Be with those that we've mentioned for prayer. Got doctor's appointments coming up this week. 
waiting answers from test. Lord, we thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you'll give me just, just a minute, we've got uh, some more comments. Uh, Brother Keith Hawk tuned in tonight. And Brother Keith, we appreciate appreciate you and the, the good work you're doing there at Whitehead. Uh, Miss Debbie Carroll is uh, watching. And uh, we have uh, Samantha Elam, Diane Oliver, and uh, Brandon Thomas. Thank y'all all for, for tuning in tonight. Uh, if you'll give me just a minute, I'm going to try to get this... Uh, document pulled up here i hope you you've been able to uh to read it and uh i'm just gonna pull it up here and uh try to get it we've i think we've got it big large enough that uh everybody's gonna be able to read it but uh as we said earlier in the the evening we're gonna talk about things that's coming up and we've had uh some folk, different folks to uh, look look at this, and uh, we've added some things. We've taken away from some things, and uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. Uh, one thing I didn't like as an employee of the state of Alabama was going to a meeting and get read to. So I'm not uh, not going to read the entire thing to you. I hope that's large enough print that you can see uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, so it's my understanding that beginning tomorrow and our next church service is Wednesday, May 13th, as long as we can keep the six feet of uh, social uh, distance uh, that we can return to church Wednesday uh, evening. Now, uh, be patient with us. This is a... Uh, you. This is the first time that uh, I think any of us have ever been through anything like this. Uh, to begin with, we're just going to have worship services. Uh, that'll be starting at 1050 on Sunday morning, uh, 6 p.m. on Sunday night, and 7 p.m. on Wednesday evening. Uh, we're going to do Facebook Live for those that feel that they cannot attend uh, can stay at home and still be a part of that worship service. Uh, I'm going to need somebody that, that's there. Uh, like here tonight, I've got uh, three screens I'm looking at. And uh, I can see when folks uh, make a comment. And uh, uh, But like, as in Melanie tonight, she... Uh, mentioned some folks that I did not know was watching if she didn't put up that comment and that's uh, as she put it up there from Springfield First Baptist Church. So um, we're going to need somebody during the church service to maybe respond to them. Uh, if they put a prayer request up, get that to me so that we can uh, take care of that. We, we ask that if you do come that you wear a mask. I, I've ordered some disposable mask that if you come in, you don't have one, we ask you to take one and that's going to be yours to keep. Uh, we don't, please don't leave it on the, the pew. Uh, please take that home with you. And uh, according to the guidance of how many, how often you can use that, use it. But if you're sick, please stay at home and join us on Facebook live stream. Uh, we ask that families sit together and uh, that we can keep that six foot of social distance between them and other households. We're going to talk, going to look at uh, what the state uh, health department put out, state department of public health put out about uh, the social distance in, in the church. Uh, we're going to take up the hymnals and utilize the projector to project the screen up there. And I know, I love the hymnals, but uh, there's some things that we can use that we can project even the music up, up there. So uh, that 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 should be okay. So we're going to take the 
the hymnals where that'd be one last thing we have to clean. We do need after each service to have a volunteer crew come through and wipe down all the area, all the pews, doorknobs. Uh, most of the doors will be propped open, so uh, shouldn't be that that much except for uh, doing the pews. We're going the doors. The doors going to the back of the church will be propped open, and there'll be a chair there. That's where the offering plates are going to be. Where we won't pass an offering plate, but you can deposit your offering in that offering plate as you exit or we're not going to have a fellowship time uh we encourage that no handshakes hugs be shared before or after the service uh and again all this that that i've put out all this we're talking about all this we're studying about it's my understanding the governor's by by wednesday will be putting out some more information because her first safer at home order expires on the 15th so uh, just uh, keep all that in mind. Is this an exhaustive list of everything that we need to discuss? No. You say, well, why didn't you make one? Uh, this is something that we're going to start with, and this is something we're going to grow with. But if you look at that, I hope you can see that bottom thing it says following seating guidelines provided by the alabama department of public health and let me uh pull that up and hopefully i've got that zeroed in there to where we can see it it's over on the right hand screen health uh so it says strongly, I will read this to you, strongly encourage people 65 or older and others especially at risk to watch or participate in the service remotely. If if you are, now when they first came out with this, I'm gonna let something out of the bag that not too many of you know, and I'm putting it out on Facebook Live, gonna put that on YouTube, gonna put it on Twitter, so a bunch more people gonna, when they put out, first started to talk about the COVID-19, the coronavirus, uh, they put out three things that people needed to watch out for. Well, two of those three hit me pretty hard because according to my medical doctor, I've got two of the, of the three. So uh, some of this stuff, we're protect, trying to protect one another uh, to where we don't get sick, period. So if you feel like you don't need to come, we told you this this morning. Don't feel downhearted. You you watch from home until the time gets safe that you feel you can come. Uh, I fully believe that. You 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 stay. You keep yourself safe from this illness. All illnesses. Uh, that second thing, designate an area inside the facility reserve at the at-risk population or offer a service for at-risk population attendees only. We'll have just one service morning and evening, but there are some areas in the church. You can go to the fellowship hall and listen over the speaker from there and not be in the sanctuary with everybody else. Uh, I had intended on just using that if we had to, but uh, then the next point, ensure proper spacing between an attendees. Keep at least two empty seats or six feet of separation between parties in any role except as follows. Two or more members of the same household can sit together next to one another. With two seats or six feet separation empty on either side, alternate rows between attendees, every other row left empty. Now, what we've, what I've talked about with uh, several folks is, is that if one group comes in, say the Moses of North Grassy come in, and they sit on the aisle side of a pew. Well, the next people can come in and sit on the other end on the front or in the back, and that's going to keep the six feet distance unless the family takes up the whole pew, in which if a family takes up the whole pew, 
then there'd have to be a pew left empty in front and back of them. And uh, so we went over this hurriedly. We will go over more in more detail, maybe some things that we, those of us that have looked at this did not see, and we can discuss more about this Wednesday night. We will be, uh, I've got a tripod order that's supposed to be here by Wednesday. The mask that I've got ordered should be here by Tuesday. And so we should be good to go Wednesday. One of the things we need to do Wednesday is take up the hymnals. We thought we could put those in the choir loft and, uh, those of you that are coming Wednesday, please do not let me forget that we need to decide about the fifth Sunday night singing and, and let Blaine and uh, and Wayne uh, and, and Miss East know uh, if we're going to be able to do that. And uh, again, we, we thank you so much for listening. And uh, if you have any questions, please text me. If you got some things that I did not cover, that you've seen in uh, the Alabama Department of Public Health publication there that we did not put on our list, uh, please uh, uh, let me know. And I, and I know that, again, by Wednesday night, all this stuff, even from the Alabama Department of Public Health, even their stuff may be changed. So flexibility, it's always been my thing in education when I worked in education to be flexible because we never knew what, the next day or the next minute would hold. But uh, again, we, we thank you for uh, tuning in tonight. And remember that we love you. More than that, God loves you. And y'all have a great week. And I hope to see uh, some of you Wednesday night. But if, you, if you're not able to come Wednesday night, watch us on Facebook Live again at 7 o'clock. Miss Debbie, we, we love you too. And uh, most of all, love all of you. Most of all, God loves you. And good night, everybody.